Praise be to Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with us today to help us in our learning. As we begin this session, let us place ourselves in the presence of the Lord by closing our eyes. Say the prayer in your mind as I help you in prayer. Jesus, our Lord and Master, there is no one better than you to teach us about what we need to do. Guide us in our simple effort to glorify your name. Engrave in us the desire to know more about you today. Be present amidst us along this session. Amen. Does anyone know or remember and recall what we had learned in the previous lesson? We learned that the church is a missionary by nature. If church is missionary by nature, we, the sons and daughters of the church, are part of that church in that mission. Can anyone tell me or think what could be the mission that we have? We have been given a mission. And what is that mission? Everyone is given a task to complete. Students have a mission to study. Teachers have a mission to teach. Doctors have a mission to serve and so on and so forth. The difference is, along with the mission that we have, put in a little more love, kindness, sincerity, and dedication, etc. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 14 to 15 says, After John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Today, we are going to begin the second chapter, evangelization. Now, evangelization is the basic duty of the church. Now, what is this evangelization? St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 15 says, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. So before we move on to today's session, let us understand what is the content that I'm going to deal with and what we're going to learn. In this session, we will be dealing with two topics. Church is the result of the proclamation of the gospel. And church, the evangelizer. What is evangelization? It is a job that we have as a missionary. So evangelization is the proclamation of the gospel within the church and to the non-Christian brethren. So that is the origin of the church. Church is the result of the proclamation of the gospel. We have been given a mission and that mission is the proclamation of the gospel. The kingdom of God. The result of the proclamation of the gospel is the origin of the church. The continuation of Jesus' mission through his disciples further being handed down to us, being given to the early Christians. A complete trust in God is essential. We need to take along in our mission of preaching the gospel. Be ready for a sacrifice. It calls for sacrifice. Our mission calls for sacrifice. Proclamation is of the gospel is no bed of roses. It is a journey of suffering. And Jesus very clearly mentions in his words to the disciples that there is going to be trouble. There is going to be suffering. There is going to be difficulty. The apostles were witnesses to these words. Deeds. Death and resurrection of Jesus. So they were imbibed with the spirit of Jesus. They were induced with the spirit of Jesus. Because they were with Jesus, 
He, they have seen the life of Jesus in his three years of public ministry. The apostles were empowered by the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit was given to the apostles to continue their mission after Jesus had been ascended to heaven. When we talk about Jesus' mission, Jesus' missionary life, he had a conviction because he fulfilled it with conviction because he knew he was sent by his father. He is anointed to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus revealed the kingdom of God. How did he reveal the kingdom of God? Because in his public ministry of three years, he had done his mission or he has accomplished his mission. How? His presence itself was a mission. His messages, his teachings through parables, his miracles which were a witness to the goodness of God, is suffering death on the cross. And that's how he revealed his mission. That's how he is convinced that Jesus is the missionary, first missionary. Now, what is our responsibility as a disciple? Our responsibility because Jesus has entrusted to us this mission and with the task of preaching the gospel. Apostles received the message of the kingdom of God from Jesus. He says, take care of my lambs. And Jesus anointed Peter as the head of the church. John chapter 21 verse 15 says, Disciples lived with him and had seen him do the same because Jesus was a role model. He had done all what he had to to accomplish his mission given to him by his father and ready and go for the mission with a complete trust in God. That is what we require because as a disciple, we need to go forward with a concept of suffering. We need to accomplish our mission because it's no more a bed of roses. Ready for the sacrifice and sufferings to preach that the kingdom of God is near. These are the responsibilities as children of God to complete the mission of God. How were the apostles empowered? They witnessed the words and deeds of Jesus. They saw the death and resurrection of Jesus. The resurrected Lord confirmed the apostles in their faith. Empowered by the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, we know in the beginning of the church, the early Christian community, the community listened to them and believed. And the believers joined with the apostles, understood them uh, in the fellowship meal and in prayer. And that's how the apostles were empowered, how they were enhanced with the power of the Holy Spirit to continue the mission of Jesus entrusted to Jesus by his father. And how did the disciples fulfill their mission? They proclaimed the gospel to the whole world. After the Pentecost, when they received the spirit, they went out and preached and people could hear and understand in different language, their own language. The power of the Holy Spirit was induced, has induced them to get into the field of mission. They went to different parts of the world. They witnessed with their life. The Lord was with them in working miracles because nothing could have been accomplished without the power of the Holy Spirit and without the power of Jesus. They baptized many to faith. Church communities began to grow. We find the apostles had taken on to this mission and have gathered together the early Christian communities in prayer and meal and in different parts of the world. And they organized small pockets of Christian communities. The church in India also grew with the arrival of St. Thomas the Apostle. And this is how the disciples began to continue their mission. Now this evangelizer, church we call it as an evangelizer. 
This is evangelizing has got two concepts. It has a two tasks to accomplish. First one is the re-evangelization within the church. The Christian community that is already the believers need to be rejuvenated in the faith in Christ. And the second part of it is evangelization of the non-believers, non-Christian brethren. So these two concepts are there, two sides of the same coin. The church has a task in front of her. So let us understand what we have gone through today. The basic duty of the church is evangelization. We said evangelization is a basic duty and the church is an evangelizer. And so the church has got this evangelization duty in which we are part of that mission. Church is the result of the proclamation of the gospel. Disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit. After the resurrection of Jesus, he came down and breathed onto them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continued to enhance their power of ministry among the people, among the crowds. Church, the evangelizer, re-evangelization within, evangelization of non-believers. This is what we have gone through in today's class. What do we, do we, what do we need to take home? The words we need to take home. Let us take home today a sentence from St. John's Gospel. Chapter 4, verse 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Let us be happy with a uh, joy of doing an activity. Read the life of St. Thomas, the apostles who came to India. We know that. He is our beginning. What did he do? What do you need to do is in this activity is what did he do to proclaim the gospel? How did he witness his faith? So if you go into the history, go back, we can search the net and find out the history of St. Thomas and write down these two concepts. Compile your findings on an A4 size sheet in a paragraph with the pictures in collage form. Let us wind up this session with a prayer. Take a comfortable position and say the prayer in your mind as I lead you in prayer. God, our loving Father, thank you for the wonderful gift of being your children. Grant us the grace to be good workers in your vineyard. Give us the strength to work for the proclamation of the kingdom of God and consider it as our duty and responsibility. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you all.